हेलो वेलकम टू दिस चैनल केमिस्ट्री मेड इजी बाय डॉक्टर अशोक मोहित टुडे वी विल सी अ नील्स बोर क्वांटम थ्योरी ऑफ एटम सो दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ आवर प्रेजेंट टॉपिक दैट इज एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर सो हियर वी विल डिस्कस व्हाट इज नील्स बोर क्वांटम थ्योरी फॉर द एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर नील्स बोर नील्स बोर in 1913 in 1913 proposed his concept for the first time and later on in following 10 years it was further refined in order to provide much better uh, interpretation <coughs> this theory is based on certain assumptions so we will see here what are the assumptions of this theory so the assumptions so these assumptions show that first assumption is electron <coughs> so electron is negatively charged negatively charged particle and it is revolving around the positively charged nucleus so here the center of this atom is occupied by the the nucleus so there is a nucleus which is positively charged this is positively charged <coughs> so these electrons which are negatively charged are revolving around the positively charged nucleus which is at the center and it is very compact mass it includes almost all mass of the atom and electrons have very small mass or we can say negligible mass of the atom <coughs> the nucleus contains the protons and that is why this positive charge is developed in the nucleus and electrons are negatively charged so the electron cloud of the uh, electron cloud present around the nucleus is of negatively charged now if we see the structure it shows that the electrons are present in circular orbits around the nucleus if we mark this positively charged center that is a nucleus then there are electrons present around the nucleus in circular paths like this like this so if we label these then we can have say this is first main shape that is n is equal to 1 it is also called k then this is second main shape and is equal to 2 which is called l then this is third n is equal to 3 called m then it is fourth n is equal to fourth and this is called n similarly this is n is equal to fifth and god o and this is n is equal to 6 called p so these are alternate levels so the or energy level that is circular orbit present close to the nucleus is named as with the principal quantum number n as 1 or it is called a k orbit similarly the next 
orbit to this first main chain is n is equal to 2 or it is called L. In this way, the third main chain is called M, fourth main chain is called or orbit is called N, fifth is called O and sixth is called P. In this way, the order goes on and we find that when there is a nucleus, say there is a there is an electron. Say there is an electron here in the nucleus. Or we can have various electrons here like this. In definite number, there is no only one electron. So we have just represented in this way. So if we are having these electrons present in these orbits which are stationary these are not these are not moving here and there but these are stationary and their energies are fixed their energies are fixed <coughs> so these energy levels and their energies we will discuss their energies later on <coughs> so we say that energies of all these orbit or orbitals energy levels energy of these orbitals or orbits is fixed and it is given by also we can see this Rydberg constant this is given by R H or here we can have another means for R H or means the Rydberg constant for this hydrogen it is given by 1 upon n square that is n square <coughs> so here if we take it is the 1 then this value of rh is only rh because it is 1 because square of 1 is 1 1 upon 1 is 1 so it is only rh so in this way if we consider this value for second orbital this is for n is equal to 1 when we consider n is equal to 2 then we can have 1 upon 2 square that is 4 so this energy of this second orbit is equal to we can show here now we will see that on this what is Rh we can have this energy here this we have energy is equal to <coughs> is minus Rh or we can say this is Rh energy of this value is Rh then for second it is record it will be minus 1 upon 4 1 fourth Rh so in this way we can have uh, energy minus 1 upon it's 9Rh. So in this way we can have the various values. So we will discuss these uh, energy values later on also. But at present we see in the postulates that these are stationary orbits and they have fixed energies. But the electron, say if we take hydrogen atom, so if we consider only hydrogen atom then there is only one electron and this electron <coughs> when or until it is in the stationary orbit it will not absorb any it will not uh, emit any radiation it will not emit any radiation it will be stable or stationary but in the when it is in this orbit it may absorb energy and get excited to higher energy level so after absorbing energy it may go to this energy level or this energy level or this energy level so this is called excitation of this electron so this excitation takes place when the atoms or the hydrogen is excited by supplying some energy or by irradiating with certain specific waves or radiations so <coughs> these all these energy levels 
are required depending upon the number of electrons present in the atom. But if we consider only hydrogen atom, it contains only one electron. So Niels Bohr proposed his theory for the first time in case of hydrogen and it was then considered for other or multi electron systems. <coughs> so we can consider this energy term here. So energy of these orbitals is given by E is equal to, that is energy of these orbits is given by for hydrogen atom, H is for hydrogen atom, R is the real constant and there is 1 upon, this is 2 square or we can say this is 2 square or we can have any of these orbitals, that is lower orbital. We can consider here lower orbital and L. Say this is when N is equal to 1, it is a lower orbital. Or when we consider this is N, when N is equal to 2, it may be lower orbital, but there should be higher orbital like this. And H, and H square here it is also square. <coughs> so here <coughs> the values are given in this way. The energy is given by this Rydberg constant for hydrogen atom into 1 upon Nl that is lower energy level and it is the principal quantum number m. So in case of hydrogen we can take it as 1 first energy level and the higher in the next higher energy level is n is equal to 2. So here it is n is equal to 2, so it becomes 2 square. Here it becomes 2 raised to 1 raised to 2, means 1 square. So 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon 2 square, that is 1 upon 4. So we can calculate in this way. Here the Rydberg constant Rh. Here the value of this Rh for hydrogen is given as that is Rh is equal to so this Rydberg constant is given by 2 pi square mu z square e raised to 4 upon 4 pi square into epsilon 0 square h square so this gives 2 pi square mu z square e raised to 4 upon 4 pi square epsilon 0 bracket square into h square here <coughs> this mu is mu is reduced to a mass and this reduced mass mu is reduced mass reduced mass and it is given by 1 upon mu is equal to 1 upon <coughs> this mass of electron plus mass of nucleus nucleus so this gives the reduced mass <coughs> then we can have another terms that is here Z is we can have this Z Z is charge of nucleus if it is hydrogen the charge is plus one positive charge it gives number of protons present in the nucleus then E is electronic charge electronic charge <coughs> then this H is Planck's constant Planck's constant so these are various values here is epsilon 0 is the permittivity 
परमितिविति ऑफ वैक्यूम इट इज परमिटिविटी ऑफ वैक्यूम सो दीज आर वेरियस टर्म्स यूज इन दिस इक्वेशन मीन्स दिस इज मेन इक्वेशन इन विच दिस आर वैल्यू इज गिवन हियर एंड आर हैज दीज वेरियस टर्म्स we have also seen that this na is lower energy level and nh is higher energy level l is for lower energy h is for higher energy and this n is principal quantum number so if we change this atom so now we have taken here hydrogen atom so rh indicates rydberg constant for hydrogen atom so if we change the atom you have to mention here that particular atom and on that basis here the values will also change that is mu will change z will change these <coughs> values are also changing so h is these are constants so permittivity is also here available <coughs> so these are various terms in order to calculate the energy of different orbits present around the nucleus so here rydberg constant depends upon the mass of the nucleus as well as it depends on the fundamental constants as and which we have discussed just now <coughs> then next point of this bohr's theory is limitations limitations so first limitation is that it is most suitable for hydrogen atom only but if it fails then we consider multi electron system is if we consider the same model for higher atoms that is say helium lithium sodium potassium rubidium etc then this model slightly fails so it cannot explain the concepts much better this theory cannot explain the spectra of multi electron atoms uh, what is spectra means when the atom absorbs certain energy from outside or from any source of radiation then the electrons present in the lower energy level are excited to higher energy level and during this the energy is absorbed but after excitation the an electron at high energy level can fall back to the lower energy level or any other in energy level in between these levels so depending upon that energy level we can have the different spectra that is the energies are uh, emitted when the higher energy electron goes to the lower energy level then it emits the radiations of specific energy and these radiations are developed in the form of various lines called as spectral lines now we will see the what are these lines later on then another limitation is that this theory that is model cannot explain the zeeman and stark effect zeeman zeeman and stark effect Stark effects. Zeeman effect and Stark effect. What is the Zeeman effect and Stark effect? In case of Zeeman effect, when the source of radiation <coughs> used for the spectrum or the or for obtaining spectrum is kept in the magnetic field. source source of radiation is kept in magnetic field magnetic field then then what is observed each spectral line say if the initially there is only one spectrum spectral line it is then split into the spectral line is split into various other spectral lines 
so this is because the effect of magnetic field on the source of radiation so this is called the zeeman effect similarly when we consider the <coughs> source is kept in an electric field when the source is kept in the electric field the splitting of line is also in the similar fashion and that is called a star kick so when the source of radiation is kept in an electric field we also observe the same type of splitting that is like one spectral line is split into number of such fine lines so this is broad spectrum this is fine or refined spectrum <coughs> so this stark effects and zeeman effects are observed so in case of hydrogen we can have the higher energy level that is n h say this is the higher energy level then there is an l that is a lower energy level and if we have <coughs> the electron here in this so if we represent this electron here then we can observe that this electron can be excited to higher energy level so it can move to this energy level so because of this uh, during this process the energy is equal to h nu so it has specific energy absorption so after absorption of energy the electron jumps from nl to nh and after or it may be depending upon the magnitude of this energy where it is h1 or h2 or h h nu 2 so depending upon this it may get excited to still higher energy levels so we can so that there may be still higher energy levels like this so the electron can jump to higher energy levels like this and from these energy levels it can again come back to the original level either directly or indirectly means it can directly move to this nl or it can move to this then it can move to this then it can move to this level so in this way <coughs> these are the energy levels so this is n is equal to 1 This is n is equal to two. This is n is equal to three. This is n is equal to four. In this way, we can have number of such energy levels. So, in if we have the energies, or if we consider such type of energies, then say this is the nucleus of the atom. This is nucleus, and when these are the various energy levels like this. When it is n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three, n is equal to four, n is equal to five, and n is equal to six. And if we go much higher, then it will be say n is equal to infinity. N is equal to infinity. So in such case, we find that the energy orbit that is n is equal to one in any atom. is very close to this nucleus so if there is an electron so this is electron present here so it is strongly held this nuclear force of attraction on this electron holds that electron strongly so energy of this n is equal to 1 is much higher energy of this orbit is much higher then if n is equal to consider n is equal to 2 it is slightly away from this n is a nucleus so energy of this orbit is relatively lower again if we consider the energy of n is equal to 3 it is relatively again away from this nucleus so energy of this orbit is again lower so in this way if we go away from this nucleus say up to n is equal to infinity the energy of this orbit is about to it means the electron means this nucleus and there is electron so there is electron 
these are independent species these become independent independent species these are not under the influence of any other means this nucleus cannot have any influence or force of attraction so that nucleus will bind strongly or keep the electron under the force of attraction so this electron is almost free it is do never ex experience it is not having any showing impact of any nuclear force of attraction <coughs> so uh, <coughs> in this way we can understood the energies of different energy orbits so <coughs> we can have also a problem on that but it is uh, you can discuss it sometimes in later lectures also so we will stop here and we will see the next point of this topic in the next lecture please keep watching this video and subscribe this video and share this video with your friends please press bell icon button and like button and you can put your comments in the comment box so see you next time till then goodbye thank you